Liam here from Primo Nomad. Uh, in this video I'm actually going to be showing you how to tan a deer hide. I've got a fallow doe hide that I shot just last week. I've been preparing it and it's actually salting in this bucket right now. So let me show you how you get to that stage and I hope you do enjoy. And the colour is absolutely amazing. The patterning is proper traditional fallow, a little bit of the tail there. So I'm going to stretch it over this and start to jet wash it just to flesh it. Traditionally, this would have been done with stone tools, a long stone tool over a log, and you'd shred off of that. You can use a metal tool to do the same, almost like a draw knife, but the reverse. And I have done that before, but it takes a lot of work and to get it done nice and quickly it's good to use a powerful jet wash and that just gets the hide really nice and prepped. All of that flesh comes off and the fat and the membrane and then I can salt it and leave that to start drying out and curing which also sets in the skin. So I'll get the jet wash all set up. I've also got this, the barbecue out because I can drape it over like so. And that makes for good jet washing because you've got all these edges you can work off and it pushes everything nice and off so i'll get going and uh yeah start fleshing it out so i'll set the jet wash to like a flat fan and i can use that to then act as if i'm scraping off so it really pushes that fat and membrane off So I've now finished jet washing the hide, fleshing it all out, it took quite a while, but nevertheless it's all done. I will show you it now and what I'm gonna do is let that drip dry until most of the water's off it and then just salt the hide. So just normal non-iodized salt, so that's sea salt, and then just cover the whole hide. So there's the hide all fleshed out guys, it's good and soft. There's a few areas like there where the bullet hole was, but nevertheless it's good to have it done. So. I'm just going to leave that to drip dry, probably turn it over so the hair's facing up. And then like I said, I'll just cover this with a good layer of salt. So I'll just start just going over the edges. This is quite a big hide. So now I've done all the edges, I can just go over the main hide. So for that fallow hide, I used about two kilos of salt. Now that's ready to store like that. And what I'll do is I'll stand that up in a bucket this direction, so the folds at the top and it can drain that moisture out and we'll keep dumping off that moisture. So I'll get a bucket and I'll show you that now. I can stand that up in the bucket, little tail sticking out and that's good to go. I can leave that for a good two or three days, check it every day, drain off the liquid and replace the salt if it's good and saturated, which this stuff definitely will be. So it's only been overnight now guys, but you can see just how much liquid is in there quite a lot so I'm going to drain that off and again leave it for the rest of the day until about four o'clock this evening when I can re-salt it. The hide is all salted now it's been three nights um, four days and that is well and truly drained there's not much liquid in the bottom there you can see there's only a little bit and I did prop it up on a log just so that the bottom wasn't sitting wet in that liquid. So there's a the hide guys and you can see how much darker it's gone. It's gone this kind of bluey colour where the moisture's dried out and you can start to see the hair through, which is quite nice. So now that I'm really happy that the hide's all salted well, that's going to help the hair set and it's helped it dry out. I'm going to suspend it over the barbecue 
just so it can dry any last remaining moisture over it. It's quite a good breeze out here today, so that's perfect. And then I'll probably do a little neutralizing bath to relax it with some washing soda and uh, go from there. I'm going to do a pickle on this, so a pickling tan using alum, uh, which is aluminum sulfate, aluminium sulfate. I will show you that and me making it and give you all the ratios and it just provides a lovely white hide with real plush hair so I can't wait for that stage. Probably leave this drying all day and get the pickle started tomorrow and we can leave that for a good seven days. So that's all drying now. The last few little drips are going to be dripping off these edges where it's been in the brine solution. And that's ready to be left there in the breeze all day until it's completely dry. So guys, it's now day four. The hide has been drying. I brought it in last night, obviously, because the dew, I didn't want that to get onto it. But it's really good and dry now. So what I'll probably do is just give that a quick rinse off in just a salt water solution just to neutralize and just to get it a bit more relaxed before it goes into the pickle um, i've got that the ingredients are down here all pre-prepared i'll show you those so i have a clear tub full of warm water there's two gallons of water in there so nine liters for us metric folks i've got two cups of salt here non-iodized salt i've got two tablespoons of sodium carbonate you could use sodium bicarbonate which is just baking soda or baking powder and also aluminium sulfate i've taken 100 grams out of here because it's a kilo and it's a ratio of 100 grams per liter of water for the alum and then you can just divide these two as well so that's all you need for the pickle process and again we'll mix the alum in first then we'll add in the salt followed by the sodium carbonate and then the hide. So I've got the bucket with some of the salt in from the actual drying process left in the bottom. I'm just going to fill that up with water and just flush out the hide, give it a little wash. And in fact, I'm going to put a tiny bit of washing soda in here. So I've got these soda crystals and I'm just going to put a little sprinkle in just to help act as a detergent to get any remaining fat off of this hide before I tan it and pickle it. that hide can start going in. Right, that's good and rinsed now guys. So I'm just gonna let that drip dry while I prepare the other solution. So soda crystals is actually sodium carbonate. And last time when I did this, I actually did double up on the amount and it worked perfectly. So I am actually gonna introduce just a little bit more soda crystals into this, because I have got two gallons of water. So we'll go for the equivalent of four tablespoons worth. We've got 900 grams of alum four tablespoons of soda, sodium carbonate, and two cups of salt. So I'm gonna go in first with the alum, and this is warm water. So that's all in now. I'm gonna add the salt. Then I'm going to add the sodium carbonate. And do expect a reaction as if you've added vinegar to bicarbonate of soda. It's very similar, it froths up. So I'm going to stir that now. You want to get that well and integrated together, good and dissolved. That's why you want to use warm water, because warm water aids in solubility. So it should go this nice cloudy colour. And at that stage we can now add the hide in.
usually you do have to weigh these down because there's a lot of air that gets trapped in underneath so I normally get just a really clean brick or a stone something flat ideally and weigh that down to try and push that air out from underneath and make sure it's good and submerged so there we have it guys that's going to be pickling now for seven days like I said and it will just keep maturing and maturing and getting even better and when it goes fully white that is when it's completely tanned so I'll keep you along the process of checking it and yeah just keep it nicely submerged keep it under underweight if you can if it's starting to float up and just turn it every day just make sure any sediment in the bottom keeps getting mixed back up there shouldn't really be any it should all dissolve after the first 24 hours so it's been a few days now guys and I've just been stirring this shaking it up and giving it a move around it's going really well you can see how white it's going inside which is really really good sign it's getting much kind of stiffer as well which is also a good sign feels a lot denser so yeah just keep doing that and I'll check in with you in a few more days so guys it's now been a few more days you can see the stones in the top weighing it down there's a little bit of membrane that I did miss in some places which has started to float off now which is really good but I can give it another scrape and the hide is feeling really good so I'm gonna tomorrow take this out and give it a flush and a rinse I think I think it's almost ready but I'm just gonna give it one more stir tonight turn it over put the stones back on top and we'll see you then you see that hair is lovely and plush and it's not coming out which is a good sign can't tug that out very very good sign you can see the hide there is lovely lovely and white minus a few bits of leaf matter that got in there so guys the hide has been tanning now for quite a while actually it's been pickling for just over a week and a half nearer two weeks and you can see there's not really been much change and it's a completely safe solution to leave it in for a little while if you do have to which i've had to just been so busy with work so i'm going to get this out today neutralize it which means just rinse it in a solution that kills any of the kind of alkalinity or acidity that's in this pickle and then we can leave it to dry give it a neat's foot oil which just helps lock in some of that moisture but also gives it some flexibility and allows it to be much easier for the breaking in process so i've got my gloves on we can drain off that liquid get the rocks out have a little look at the hide and then we're going to put it back in the container and just put in some ingredients which i'll show you in the next step just to neutralize it and we can leave it in there for about 15 to 45 minutes and then we can leave it to drip dry i can already tell that it's done a nice job it's good and it's not stiff but it's a lot tighter than it was hides all in here now all the pickles been drained off and I'm going to neutralize it in a bath I've got just over an ounce of baking powder which is going to neutralize it so I'll sprinkle that all over and then we'll fill that up with fresh water and just let that sit for 15 minutes So now that I've drip dried the hide, I've actually folded it in on itself and it's just dripping into the sink now, but it's right there and I'm really, really happy with that. That hide is looking absolutely amazing. And I've actually got here some Neat's Foot Oil. So Neat's Foot Oil is really, really good. It's from the hooves um, of deer, I believe. And this oil is amazing at making leather nice and supple. So what I'll do is I'll mix a bit of this with water, about 50-50 just into a little container and then I'll apply it all over the inside of the hide, the flesh side, and we can fold this up and leave it for a few days just to really penetrate in there before we hang it and stretch it. I like to use a brush for applying it. 
just something like this, a good mop brush works really, really well. So I've added some water, you can see it's separating there. I'm just gonna mix that together. Like I said, it will emulsify. So there we are, it starts to go kind of semi cloudy once it's mixed in well. So I'm actually inside in the workshop at the moment. I didn't do most of the tanning in here just because I don't want to get fresh hides tainting all of this area. So I'm just giving it a really good coat as you can see with this neat foot oil and water mix, getting it over all of the edges especially. And that will just help make it really, really good and supple. So I can put that aside for the next application and I'm just gonna fold this in on itself. And that will just ensure that the oil gets into every nook and cranny and really has a chance to soak in. And there we are. I can put that back in the box I can tanned it in and leave that store for a few days. So the hide's been oiling now for about two days all folded up nicely and I've just unfolded it. Still a little bit of moisture on that, so what I'm gonna do is just leave that spread out like this, just to air dry. And when it's a bit more air dry, I can fix that to a stretching rack or a board. I tend to use a board, but in this instance, I might actually use a stretching rack because it's so large. So we'll see what options we have, but like I said, we'll let that dry out a little bit. So I've just constructed this frame around the hide. It's a little bit short at one end, but I can pull that down and tuck the legs around. But it's all the timber that I have at the moment. And I'm gonna screw all the corners together and then just put a diagonal piece to give it some strength. Unfortunately, I had to leave it an extra day or two. So you can see that it has started drying out in some places. So it has already shrunk a little bit, but it's getting really good and firm. And you can see where, as I've been stretching it, it started to break that hide. You can actually see the white now starting to go where I start to push. That's from stretching the fibers out. So all that blue will go nice and white. I'm gonna stretch it out now and let it fully dry to tighten up. So I've got my frame built now, just with the bits of timber that I had. And what I'm gonna do is flip it over and put in a number of screws, just gently in and along this edge, all the way along the outside, and I can get some strings puncture a hole through the very edge of this hide. I don't want to damage it too much and then tension the strings. Done this side and I've done this side in opposites. So you don't work kind of going all the way around because you'll get to one area, there'll be a load of slack. Tension off that, push it through, tie a knot, tie it to this tight. Do it the same this side, move up, keep working that way, then opposite ends. So I've started to go around. In a few places, I've actually been able to just, on the edge, put a screw through the hide. Coming along well, my camera died while I was sorting this out and I did need to crack on, so I'm gonna get the rest done. And then I'll show you once it's done, but you can see there, it's getting really nice and firm. So the hide's all strung up now, nice and tight. And that's ready to be left now until it's completely dry, which will probably only be a few days, although the temperature's quite cold now. But I'm really happy with how that's gone and hopefully it's given you guys a bit of insight how to get that done. And you can see on the back, that beautiful pellage, beautiful coat. So the hide is now complete guys, it's been drying for a number of weeks, we've had the Christmas festivities and during that time it's just been getting more and more solid, so it's really tight, like a drum now. Very very happy with how that's gone, you can see the colour has gone completely white, it's transformed from that almost blue hue to um, this lovely cream kind of ivory colour and it's got no moisture in there at all. The Neatsfoot oil has completely soaked in and it's definitely 
got a lovely texture to it. Now, sometimes people in thicker areas like this right on its back where its spine would have been, people would sand that or scrape that out. But because I'm using this as a mat and it's going to be something for bushcraft, I'm going to leave that nice and thick. So the next stage is to cut all of these or untie these. You can see how tight they are. Some of them more than others. This one, like a guitar string almost. So I'm going to undo these, then remove this hide, and we're going to start to break it in. And that is exactly what it sounds like. We've got to break this hide, so really rip it down and just brutalise this side of it to get it nice and soft and supple. So now all those strings are removed, I'm just going to remove a few of the screws that are attaching it on there from where I couldn't string it out and we're good to go. So there we have it guys, the hide all ready to break in. Now you could do the breaking in on a stump, you just want to round over the top because you don't want any sharp edges. But I'm going to show you how I do it when I'm at home and I'm not in the forest. I've come inside now, it's absolutely hammering it down outside. I was going to be breaking this in, in the garden with a post. So I've got a post in the ground and I've rounded off the top. And you could do the same with a coppice bit of timber or a stump or a fallen tree. You could round off the top so there's not any sharp edges on there and use that to break in the hide, which is the last process, the last stage of getting yourself a nice hide. Now you could leave it nice and rigid like this if it was just going to be a floor mat, that would be absolutely perfect. But because I'm going to be rolling it up, taking it on camps, I want it to be quite malleable, pliable. And I want it to just be a little bit softer. You can actually get a little bit more kind of stretch out of it, really, a tiny little bit more hide. Now, like I said, it's quite thick in some areas, so they're going to be really hard to break in. But the process is as rough as it sounds. You really break it in. So I've got a chair here, and like I said, you could use a rounded stump or a bench or a log or anything. You really just get the hide and you wrench it down over that on the skin, not on the hair side, and you really pull it down. And that starts to stretch the fibres and break it and make it really nice and malleable, just like that, really, really soft. So I'm going to keep working on this. And that's basically what you do the whole way through the process. Now in traditional places, if they were doing a raw hide with the hair off, some places, like even in the Sami, they'll chew on that just to make it that much more soft and malleable. But it's amazing just how stretchy this material is and how rough you can be. You can really, really pull it apart and get your fingers in and stretch it, for example. using the corner of that chair and the edge and pulling in and really getting my weight into there you're able to stretch the hide and that's the breaking in process it starts to go really nice and soft in those areas because you're stretching those fibers out and you can see as I do that they start to go nice and white and that's the breaking in process So this is going to take me a number of hours to crack on with this fallow hide, but you can see it's already starting to come on. And I'm not going to wait until the whole process is done before publishing this video, because this is going to be one of those things where I've got a spare few 20 minutes or so of an evening, I'll just work on it until it's completely done. And that's the beauty of something like this, when it's at this stage, you can just go at it at your own pace. And I can even take it to the woods with me when it's half done, find a nice stump and continue it there. So 
maybe in the future you might see some of that. But until then, thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll get to do one of these in the woods in a really traditional manner. So until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon.